spacewalking, what NASA called extravehicular activity, or EVA, had always been part of the Gemini mission plan. Now it would be moved up to the very next flight. We did that in a very, in a reaction mode to the, uh, we were planning to do EVA all along, of course, in Germany, but in a later flight tear period, but because the Russians had done it, Bob Guru charged the program with what can you do to, to uh, equal that? And we said, well, we, uh, Max and his people said, we can build a, uh, uh, a long extension of the hose that supplies the uh, re required oxygen and cooling to the spacecraft. Uh, to the astronaut in a spacesuit, and so we, we laid out some quick plans to do that. Our lead time for planning and executing a mission uh, during the Gemini period was about uh, six to eight months. So we worked in uh, secret in uh, developing uh, the plan for the EVA, developing the equipments, the protocols. Uh, basically uh, what we'd do is we'd work a normal uh, eight to ten hour day and then we'd uh, shut down and then in secret come back at night with a very small team to uh, develop the EVA plan, test the equipment, etc. So we'd be working 12, 14, sometimes 16 hours a day, every day, uh, keeping this plan secret. In many ways it was an American propaganda stunt. There was no question about it. We wanted to demonstrate that if the Russians could do it, so could we and we could do it in short order. Test word from Houston. We're ready to have you get out whenever you're ready. Okay, we better go now, is that right? Affirmative. Okay, we're still doing a little work right here. Roger, understand. Ed White popped the hatch and stepped out 178 miles above Hawaii. Floating free, he had become a second spacecraft, flying formation with Gemini at nearly 18,000 miles an hour. With a small nitrogen-powered gun, he could change his orientation and move away from the mothership. Ed White's ultimate flying dream would last for as long as it took to traverse the North American continent. Down below, Christopher Kraft was scared to death. And I wanted to make sure that we got back in and got back in safely. So I was sort of the mother image there and wanted to get it over with. And uh, I'm sure Ed White was very, very disappointed that he had to get back in. Twenty minutes into his spacewalk, his view unburdened by Gemini's four-inch windows, Ed White didn't respond at first to Kraft's orders to get back in. When the flight director finally expressed himself in a way that could neither be misunderstood nor ignored, White complied. The flight director says, get back in. Jim, uh, what, got any message for us? Jimmy Porter, get back in. Okay. As he clambered back in, White radioed back that it was the saddest moment of his life. Although the Soviets had captured another first, there was a real sense of victory in mission control. This was probably the first time now that I had some kind of a qualitative measure that we were closing the gap with the Russians, that now instead of having years uh, where the Russians were leading uh, in establishing the records, we were now down to mere months. We knew that very shortly we would capture some of these space records ourselves. <laughs> 